the divergence of individual performance from the average performance that that uh, gives you uh, the evidence that it's not a random walk. Uh, but I mean, you now have you know hedge funds uh, becoming such a big factor in the in in in, in, in the markets that uh, uh, the. <coughs> They actually, as a group, give you uh, very close to average performance, right. maybe somewhat superior because they actually care about the performance because that's how they are rewarded, with the addition of leverage, which is uh, very important uh, because if you run an unleveraged uh, portfolio, you get a different result. That's the average portfolio. If you have le add leverage to it, of course, you, you enhance whichever direction you go. So, so um, and then you basically get the average leveraged uh, less 20 percent, uh, which is what you pay for the management. <laughs> so there has to be some limit to how far that goes. Uh, going back to the reflexivity concept. Uh, when you've applied that, what are some of the formal <coughs> techniques? Okay, modeling. What, what are some of the? What are some of the formal modeling techniques that you know, can be used you know, to approach with I don't know. You, you know, uh, I've had several conversations with people who try to <coughs> sort of make the, the point that I'm making about. Uh, indeterminate results, etc., in a way that uh, would become acceptable to, scientifically acceptable to the, to the economists. And maybe there is one, one person who's publishing a book, Roman Friedman, he claims that he has done it. And frankly, I can't understand it because it's all mathematics which I, I, I just don't follow. Uh, I hope that he he has done it. He has done it in, in a currency. Uh, yeah, I wasn't actually raising that point of you know, making it uh, fully acceptable to science. I was uh, uh, interested more in just whether there weren't uh, some techniques you know, that would help. I was thinking that um, um, uh, system dynamics techniques, okay, it seemed to me, would be very appropriate before this because incorporate uh, the feedback relations, both mm. a positive kind mm. and also a negative kind, mm. and in reflexivity, you're talking about a feedback relation. It's two-way feedback. It's clearly it's a two-way feedback. Two-way feedback, mm. which is what uh, those particular techniques mm. okay, are designed yes. to do. Yes. Now, they've received a lot of application in the environmental field, mm. and you talked uh, uh, this morning of your interest in global warming problem, uh, what I want to do is just to point out that uh, these techniques of analysis are used extremely frequently in that particular field, okay? mm -hmm. not a lot in economics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you have a question about the <coughs> Just picking up on your diagram about the transition of old science into new science. Um, and on the concept of reflexivity, there is an emerging field um, um, called bioeconomics, um, which is based on our increasingly acute ability to use outside sensors to track the in life functions of the human brain and of the mind. And so where the trend lines in this research are pointing is towards um, an ability to realistically understand the way in which the human mind is built to process information and in the course of processing information to insert biases about how it is to be interpreted. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the first time that you could, using physical means, uh, begin to penetrate um, to the question of how is it that people see and make decisions in, in this process of re reflexivity. And well, I, think I, that I that find that promise. very encouraging, what cognitive science comes up. I mean, I don't know too much about it, I'm just what I pick up from reading. 
There's a book called, called the, user, the User Illusion, which I read uh, last summer, which really kind of, uh, uh, the same way as you feel that my idea feed into you know, cybernetics, I, I felt that uh, the findings of, of uh, cognitive science uh, really feed in uh, to, to my, my theory of reflexivity. And uh, particularly, with what I mentioned when you were not there, uh, it is, um, let's say, a scientific evidence that uh, you receive uh, information on a, on a bandwidth of more than a million, and but you process it in consciousness on a bandwidth of 40. Uh, and also the evidence that it actually takes half a second to, to process it, that that's the matter, the, the, the information received is always like the, the, the perception or your uh, consciousness of information is 30 seconds, uh, 30, one, one half, half a second uh, delay. Uh, I find that uh, uh, very, uh, very sort of uh, reinforcing of this whole uh, uh, idea. And, and also the idea that uh, when you uh, uh, process it consciously, there is a rational process. You focus on it and you really uh, deal with an issue. But there are many Sort of decisions or, or attitudes that you assume that are not conscious, and in fact, the uh, there is now a, a lot of technology to exploit that. And this is the the um, uh, uh, science of uh, let's say also political mani manipulation, the the um, uh, uh, Lunds. You know, uh, formulate certain uh, words that appeal to people, uh, and so and that creates a, that creates a serious problem because uh, uh, you can actually manipulate uh, people's perception of reality, and you can so you can manipulate the truth. You don't need to just <coughs> the the nice old idea that we are seeking the truth. The reality is out there, is no longer valid. So it is, therefore it becomes much harder to remain committed to the pursuit of reality. Then you also have the option of manipulating reality. That's, I think, is the, the new problem that we confront because you know, democracy and freedom and everything was product of the environment, of the enlightenment. When you had this idea that you know uh, these truths we hold to be self-evident, uh, and that is not valid, today. we have discovered that that's not valid, and that's really a, a very serious problem uh, for uh, 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 belief in an open society. That you have to accept that you can manipulate the truth, and yet you should you still need to understand it. It's not enough to manipulate. Um, sure, I, I wanted to come back to that half second before you mentioned it. I was thinking of that. <clears throat> From one point of view, half second is a very long time um, when the mind is really working. Um, and although information now flows very rapidly, um, there's still uh, not a half second, much more. I wonder what it would be if you're following a market actively. What's the processing time? get the information. Because it's in that half second, or in that other delta T, whatever it is, that amount of time, that the individual has a chance to get ahead of what's going on. I mean, because I think, I mean, we would probably agree around this room that you're not uh, a typical investor. 